All right, how's it going? All right, how's it going? I'm here in the Redwoods in California, and I'm gonna do a um, stuff sack breakdown. I'm gonna show you some of the most interesting stuff sacks in the world. This right away, this is the, um, the Mountain Laurel Designs Core 22 pack. Um, it's a frameless pack made out of 200 denier wasabi green dyneema. Uh, it's got a really, really slender, stealthy shape. It's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like an armadillo. It has kind of an armadillo back, an armadillo spine shape where it just goes right up your spine. It's very thin. Um, and it kind of, it sits really low right against your butt. And then you can stuff it pretty high all the way up to the back of your head. And it's got kind of this roll top where you can kind of secure your heavy items like your DSLR in the top. So I'm just basically gonna pull stuff out of the Core 22 and tell you what it is, all right? These are these smelly bags that I got from Gossamer Gear. This is like the medium. Uh, this is like a small. And um, this is the large. So I think that the large is really the most, um, is, I think the large is the most versatile. You know, it can kind of work as a uh, dry bag. If, when you're going to sleep at night, if you're using a tarp, your pack might get wet and dirty during the night. If you've got a frameless pack you can, and you've pulled most of your gear out for your sleep system, you could fold up your pack and stick it in there with your other stuff. But other, you know, if you're going to carry a 45 or 55 liter pack, you could carry a couple of these smelly bags and keep your wet stuff and your dry stuff separate. Um, but basically the concept is that you can close the top and animals can't smell what's in there. These are smelly bags. They're like foolproof, uh, smelly proof bags that you can get from Gossamer Gear. You can buy them, you know, from Smelly Bags, um, Smelly Proof, whatever they're called. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's what right, that now is. Now this is the Z-Pax Dry Bag, and it's in competition with the Sea to Summit Dry Bag, and this is the small, and basically it's got Velcro on top here, and it's got clips, so you roll it up and then clip it. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I think it's kind of too small. I don't know what I would put in there. I guess it's big. Once you roll it up and clip it shut, I think it's getting kind of to the point where if you have sharp items in there, like a soap case, if you're going to put your toiletries in there, toiletries are made of plastic, and the plastic is going to put holes in the Cuban fiber, and the bag is kind of small. It's kind of pricey. It's 20 bucks. Um, I don't really know what exactly I would use this um, dry sack for. If you had a really small enlightened equipment quilt, you could put it in there. Um, it's uh, it's not very durable. It's pretty small. I'm not exactly sure what I would use it for and the top is too chunky It's it's not as compressible as it could be because it's got velcro here and that kind of adds some bulk um, Some unnecessary bulk to be honest with you. Right, so here's some other stuff from z-packs that I like this is the uh, z-packs beanie I think that this is the best ultra lightweight beanie uh, It's bigger and it covers your ears. It does show dirt uh, but it is a really warm, lightweight, good beanie that I like a lot. This is the Z-Pax wallet. This is my second one. Now you can see that the durability is an issue here if you take a look at how, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's holes all in this, uh, in my first one. The first, there's a hole right there. Let's see here. Yeah, so you can see that there's a hole. Um, you know, basically my credit cards were putting a hole in the wallet. So you can see that Z-Pax Cuban Fiber, it's not really the most durable Cuban Fiber out there. Let me compare it with for you. With um, This is the Bear Paw Wilderness um, wash basin. This is like a, this is a uh, wash basin or like a dog bowl. And you can just see that the Cuban Fiber that they use at um, Bear Paw Wilderness, it's light. It's not as compressible, but it's light. And the issue is that uh, Z-Pax gear isn't intended to be compressible because they use a 30 bag, you know. So this is good because this wallet is a little bit bigger, so it's not going to rip as easy. What happened with this one was I put some cash in here with my credit cards, and right away it just put a hole in it. All right, so here, all right, so this is Bear Pond Z-Pax uh, uh, tent pole bags. Um, let's see what's in here. So this is another stuff sack from uh, Bear Paw. It's just made out of um, a, more, a less durable Cuban fiber, but still, it's a little bit more durable than this. So the, the Z-Pax Cuban fiber, it's lighter, slightly lighter, but it is a lot le less durable than some of the other guys, okay? Uh, and last but not least, this is my favorite line, okay? Uh, Bear Paw Wilderness, they sell a, um, 
they sell a Dyneema line, a 100% Dyneema braided line that uh, doesn't get tangled. It's not as compressible as the other lines, but it doesn't tangle, which makes it really cool because at night, especially if you have long lines, like ridge lines, they can get really tangled and in the dark, they're basically like useless. But the, um, the Dyneema line that they sell at Bear Pod doesn't get tangled. Now, however, this is more compressible. This is smaller and it's also got like memory in it so it doesn't really get tangled. It's not um, Dyneema plastic line so it's a little bit more, it takes up a little bit less space but what it does is it's got kind of like memory foam in it kind of so you see how it's kind of holding its shape right now? It like, you see that? It's like bendy like a Gumby. You see that? So it doesn't really tangle. It's got some like girth to it. It's really weird line. This is this is one of the most impressive products that I've found from Z Packs. This and the beanie. This is crazy. This Z line. It's awesome. I love this. All right, so check this out. This is the uh, C to Summit um, compression sack made of Ultrasil nylon. Now Ultrasil will show wear and tear after about a year, uh, but that does fit a uh, Western Mountaineering bag or any other summer bag. If you've got a um, summer bag for Mountain Hardware, or if you're using a Big Agnes uh, bag 30 or up, or if you're using the um, a Western Mountaineering bag, you can get the extra small compression sack from Sea to Summit, and this is it. Okay, this is really small stuff, and it's, it's very, very water resistant. Uh, the top is sewn on at one spot, so it has this kind of funny thing where it has kind of like a flip lid, and you compress the other areas. Um, it does work. This works good. This is the um, the Ultra Sill mesh. All right. So the idea is that some packs, like my core, it doesn't have a um, a mesh pocket. So you would carabiner this. You would carabiner that onto the uh, onto it somehow and just hang it. Uh, but you could put your wet T-shirts or whatever in here. This is the Ultra Sill, or no, the um, the Ultra Mesh. This is the Ultra UL Mesh from uh, Cedar Summit. All right, this is the um, this is the old product from Gossamer Gear, and basically, you know, Gossamer Gear they specialize in just nylon, so you know, nylon gains weight when wet. So even though this stuff is like five or seven or seven denier nylon and it's crosswoven for durability, it does get heavy faster than Dyneema. Dyneema doesn't really gain weight when wet, and nylon does. And Gossamer Gear basically solely focuses on nylon. So does um, so do other companies. I mean, Patagonia and Mountain Hardware also do. They they only use nylon. They don't use Dyneema. But let me bust out this new stuff sack from uh, Gossamer Gear. It's really right, so crazy. these are the new uh, nylon stuff sacks from Gossamer Gear. Some people are saying that these are really the best. Um, they're obviously really, really, really lightweight. And basically, what they have is they're like cross woven five denier nylon um, silica infused nylon so it's got like this silicone on the inside it's got like this DWR on the inside and they're really really slick and really really easy to use so this is the new stuff from Gossamer Gear um, here's the larger one all right there's a here. there's a big one and then here's a small one that when you're trying to get packed up in the dark if you're going to be living outside for quite a few days in the dark when you set up your camp that can be an issue especially if it's been raining you don't want all your stuff to just get dumped out of your pack oh so this is extremely thin it's extremely light it really doesn't add any weight to your pack it will gain a little bit of weight when wet so that's just something to keep in mind it isn't Dyneema it is nylon, but um, they're only like 10 bucks, and they are a step up from the older versions. So this, these are the older ones. This is the material that they used to use for their ditty bags, and uh, and this is the new one. So there's like a huge step up for Gossamer Gear. With Gossamer Gear also sells Polycurl. This is a this is a medium two pack, pretty good deal. Okay, I haven't opened it, but you know basically if you're worried about camping on poison oak or something like that if you're worried about your stuff getting really dirty and wet and muddy you basically just put this down first the, I, from feathered friends i was able to get the uh a large version of the expedition liner from cocoon this supposedly is the best um but it's difficult to buy in large so if you use a long wide uh sleeping bag you want to get the long version of your 
sleeping bag liner. The best one is the Cocoon Expedition Liner, but you can get it in large from Feathered Friends. And basically what I find is that this is comfortable to use if you pull it up to your armpits. So if you pull it up under your arms and kind of let your arms dangle out of it inside your sleeping bag, yeah, this kind of protects, sorry for my French, but this basically protects your sleeping bag from your butt. So, you know, if you want to get a la mode in your sleeping bag and get comfortable, you can pull this up over you like pajamas, just up to your chest. And then it's comfortable to sleep in. It does have a really dangly cinch cord, which kind of is useless. And if you have a really dangly cinch cord on the hood of your sleeping bag, plus this dangly cinch cord, that makes it more or less impossible to get into the hood of both the liner and the bag because, you know, once you get inside of the liner in the bag, you don't really have a lot of freedom of motion in your hands and you've got the dangly cords like laying on your, falling on your face a lot and it's really distracting and makes it difficult to sleep. But if you just pull this up to your armpits, um, it is really comfortable. I don't always carry it, but it is small. This is the smallest, lightest, best one and it comes in large from Feathered Friends. Okay, this is the Cocoon Expedition Liner. All right, this is the... Uh, this is the sun blocker for your face from Patagonia. It's made out of capoline, comes in artistic colors, pretty fun to wear. Something you could wear at Burning Man or something, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is some uh, Esbit solid fuel cells. This is what they look like, okay? That is like a fire starter. You can cook with this, but uh, it will burn for about 15 minutes and it's relatively easy to light with the lighter. Um, it's pretty cool. This is the um, Hyper Light Mountain Systems uh, pack this this stuff sack um it's flat okay so you don't get to utilize it's kind of like the um the z packs uh dry bag this one they're both flat sacks okay they're relatively the same size they're kind of small unless you have a specific use for it it's not that helpful to have this the hyper light mountain systems is more durable than the uh, all right so the hyperlight mountain systems uh cuban fiber sack is a lot more durable than the than other cuban fiber sacks i mean it's just made out of a really dense cuban fiber and they sell this at rei but they're small they're kind of expensive and they're flat so you lose a lot of space inside the pack once you start putting stuff in it i'm using it for my tarp i've got a um nine foot by four and a half foot um cuban fiber tarp in here uh, but, you know, once I got this in the mail, I wasn't really sure what I was even going to do with it. You really can't put tent poles or stakes or anything hard and plastic or metal in here. It'll put holes in it, um, etc. All right, so a few more things. Here's a mirror. I like these. Uh, here's a Speedo. Obviously, you can't always wear a Speedo, but I have one. Okay. The, if you go on Amazon and you look at all the blinders that they have for sleeping, this is the best one. It's kind of uh, puffy. Uh, but the other ones are pretty uncomfortable or they don't really block the light. This is a good one, okay? And this, finally, this is the OAS Graphene 15. Um, see if I can dump that out for you. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so this thing works. Um, this is, as far as I know, this is the only graphene charger available on the market. It charges in 15 minutes and it charges enough to charge your iPhone twice. Now. Whenever you buy these chargers, uh, you should be really careful with them. You got to charge them first, and then I would unplug it and wait an hour before you start using it. When you charge your iPhone, don't let your iPhone run down to zero. You should start charging it when it hits about 10. But um, if you charge this OAS at Starbucks for 15 minutes, you should be able to let your iPhone run down to 10% and charge it back to 100 twice. So it holds 6,000 ohm hours of electricity but 2,000 of that drain out of the battery, so you really have about 4,000 ohm hours. The iPhone uses a little bit less than two, so you should be able to charge your iPhone twice. Uh, it doesn't really charge completely in 15 minutes. It really charges all three of the LEDs will light up in uh, actually in, in uh, 20 minutes. So in 15 minutes, two of, in about 16 minutes, two of these LEDs will light up. In 20 minutes, all three do. But if you really want to top it off at 6,000 ohm hours, you have to wait 30 minutes. And that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks a lot.